Hey all, welcome to uh, another another catch up. Um, it's been a few few minutes, so um, it's been a while actually since last time I did a vlog. Anyway, thanks for your patience. Finally, you can get around to making this video. Um, as you can probably tell by the dark lights, it's um, not very early in the day here. But um, uh, I won't uh, waste too much time here. We've got a, a few things to cover in the game. So um, Tutu here, welcome back to my channel. Um, first thing I want to start off with is a huge, 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 huge thank you to everyone. Um, I just hit 2,000 subscribers earlier today, so big milestone for me. Um, this is a like, significant milestone that would have been, I think, um, I was just over a thousand subscribers when I started this project. And so since starting this specific project of Ultimate Clash of Ninja, um, I've gained an additional um, thousand followers, which is fantastic <laughs> in my little little world in Australia. Um, so thank you guys so much for all your support. Um, Discord as well. I started the Discord server. Um, when did we start that? Uh, only maybe a year ago. I'm not sorry, not, not a year ago. Jesus, it's been longer than that. Um, 2021, uh, 2021 um, was when that got started. Um, so, um, what is that, three years? Um, and I've hit 500 um, members in that group. So, thank you guys again for all the support. Um, uh, can't, can't, can't keep doing this without your, your positive feedback and positive words. It's what kind of fuels me. Obviously, I'm not making any money from this. Um, so, my, my payment is uh, your, your, your happiness. So, thank you guys for the positive support. Let's dive into the, the new stuff in the, the, the latest test version 24.2. Um, uh, yeah, um, first uh, big update of 2024. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is the rewrite of the code. Um, the rewrite of the code is done. Um, essentially what the rewrite um, permits is um, um, I used to have two different character scripts. So the script is, it's just its just the code. It's a code for, it's a particular batch of code. So everything will have a script attached. You know, um, characters will have a script. Um, the menu has a script. There may be multiple scripts. Anyway, that's what a script is. Just FYI for terminology. So um, characters used to be based off of two scripts. There's the basic movement script, which just contains all the code around their movement that's shared across all characters. So everyone's gonna walk, everyone's gonna run, everyone's gonna dash, everyone's gonna jump. Um, everyone's going to um, get hit. That kind of stuff is universal. That's one script that I wrote, and I add that to all characters. Um, if I make any tweaks to the basic movement script, it updates all characters. Then the actual character-specific stuff, such as fighting, that was a separate script. So, um, in example, Ben Naruto would have had a basic movement script attached, and then right below that, he would have had his PTS Naruto script attached which would contain all the um, information about ETS Naruto Plus moveset. So the idea is that basic movement will be added to all characters, as it already is, and then, um, <coughs> excuse me guys, I also have a small um, thing I'm recovering from. So, um, and then all the character-specific movesets would be added in the second script. The uh, problem with that is scaling. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> basically, anytime I added a new character, I'd have to copy and paste all the logic around a move set every single time. And if I made any tweaks to any move, like a lot of characters share the same move, like Naruto and Sasuke share the same first two punches. If I made a tweak to that, let's say maybe I'm like, ooh, that's kind of weird. Let me just make a quick tweak to it. I'd have to tweak it for every single character that has that same move, <laughs> um, which is also one of the reasons why I paused when I was making PTS Sakura. Move sets use a lot of lines of code for each individual move. And I was trying to find new ways to um, make that more efficient, which I did find more efficient ways, but again, it was still taking, like, I think Naruto had, um, like, 6,000 lines of code in his just moveset part. With Sasuke, I was able to shave off 1,000 lines to get that down to, like, 5,000. And Sakura, I was able to get hers down to, like, 3,000. Um, so substantial improvements on efficiency, but the thing is, that's still 3,000 lines of code, and she's only got half of a moveset, or at least in the previous version, she had half of a moveset. Um, why is my camera doing the weird things? There it goes. So the, 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 what the rewrite allows is it's one script now. It's just one master character script, um, which allows all characters um, to have the same exact script. All the moves for all the characters are contained in one script. This may seem like, okay, well, what's the point in that? <laughs> um, well, what this basically grants is it now means all characters have access to all moves. Um, what that means is instead of coding Naruto, PTS Naruto's 5BB, 
I can now just um, code in a punch or a jab as an attack. And then anyone who uses that attack in their moveset, because a lot of moves in Clash Ninja are shared, anyone who uses that attack, I can simply just add in Naruto's text. So for PTS Naruto, PTS Naruto's 5BB will do this move, but also PTS Sasuke's 5BB will do the same move. Kakashi's 5BAB will do this move, and, and so on and so forth. That's not actually true, that was just an example. But um, that's how it works. So I only code the move, move one time, and then it's in the game, everyone has access to it. If I need a character to use that move in their moveset, I simply just add literally one line of code, um, which is their name's tag, and then uh, followed by the combo string that calls in that move, and they can now use that move when that specific input is given. Um, what this means is now, instead of having to work on the character one by one, anytime I add in a new move, let's say I'm working on Naruto's character, if I add in a move for Naruto, Anyone else in the entire game that shares that same move, I can also add their tags and their movesets will get updated. So that means more characters will have more complete movesets. Um, even though um, they're, I'm not even working on like Sakura, she's already got a few moves added to her. Um, since Sakura, the so moves of Sakura are shared with Eno, several of Eno's moves are in now, and then uh, and so on and so forth. Certain characters ha will have more moves, even though they're still dummy characters. They'll start getting access to more of those moves. If I need to make a tweak to some, maybe some people punch a little bit slower than the other person, but it's the same exact move, I can just tweak those variables um, without having to code a new move. So I would just add a second tag. If it's Naruto using the move, we'll move at this speed. If it's Sasuke moving, then move at this speed. Again, I'm not recording a move, I'm just changing one variable or two variables for those persons. Um, and that's how it works. I can do that as many times as I need. Um, all right, so that's enough on um, the rewrite. Um, um, oh, I guess technically this also opens up the door since everyone has access to all moves and those moves can kind of, I can just mix and match. Don't hold me to this, don't hold me to it. But um, this is the early foundation, base foundation of the potential for custom characters. Not at all saying those are going to come in the game, not at all giving a timeline, not at all saying I'm committing to it, just saying as I'm developing it, I'm just mixing and matching tags and I'm like creating different movesets and adding in special routes and things like that. For example, there are some moves that maybe Naruto uses that Sasuke didn't use in the original game, but maybe it makes sense that Sasuke can use them. It's just a kunai slash and Sasuke uses those. Why not throw, throw that in there as uh, maybe a mid combo instead of making him repeat some of the same moves from his other moves, just borrow a move from Naruto just to change it up. Like he normally uses kunai in his base moveset, but I threw in a couple of options where maybe shurikens will come out because shurikens are programmed in the game. Um, and same thing with Naruto, um, just mixing and matching because I can, because all the moves are accessible. So if I can find a way to maybe route those moves together at runtime, create a little mini that lets you route those moves to inputs at runtime, which means during gameplay, that is the foundation of creating custom characters. But that is a whole nutshell, because I do have some issues where the moves don't connect correctly. And it's like you really got to tweak it to make it work well. And so that's not really something you can really do at one time. Um, but anyway, that's all I was like. It's the base foundations. It could come in the future. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but not a focus by any means at any point or at any time in the first several seasons. That's something maybe if I get really good at it, I'm like, <coughs> excuse me, then maybe it can come. Foundation is there. Um, the next thing to talk about, um, I'll actually go to the viewer for this one is um, Blender models. Um, so I have not been using Blender really at all because I can't model, at least that was the case before. Um, but um, I have done a few soft modeling, for example, um, Suigetsu. Um, I took this model and I just reshaped some of the, um, uh, he, this is very close to his um, regular outfit. So I reshaped some of them. Um, to make his, um, and just m m edited the vertices just slightly to make his um, standard outfit. Um, so Getsu's easy. Karin is more difficult. That's why I haven't done hers, because this is really not her outfit at all. <laughs> so I'd really have to spend a lot of time doing Karin. And Jugo, I don't even know where to stop with him getting him in. Like, so that's why these two have not been done yet, because it would be a lot of work. This one was a little bit easier, because again, it's just deleting all the extra stuff and then slightly arranging his base outfits underneath there. Um, so basically what I've been doing, you guys have maybe seen quite a bit of um, 
action lately on custom outfits, such as all Sasuke's outfits in the game, um, including Akatsuki, um, his The Last outfits. You've maybe even seen all the Itachi ones I've added in. Um, so um, basically what, the, what I've been doing recently is working on my blender skills. Um, so as I'm adding in the new character movesets, um, that I had to manually go and change all the characters from the old scripts to the new scripts. And at the same time that I'm doing that, I also have to tweak their, um, their character, what I call character prefab. So what I'm doing is while I'm making all those changes, I'm also updating the models themselves. Um, that could be giving them more um, anime accuracy. Like Naruto, this isn't a new outfit, but I have edited this Naruto's model to be more anime accurate. I gave his collar a few more um, details to be less blocky. I mean, it's still kind of blocky because that's clashing to style, but like it actually has some shape to it now. Um, I could do, I wish I had the old one in here to do a comparison, but I don't, but I've edited it. Look at his feet, his feet used to be massive. I've um, shrunk the feet down um, to be more the same size as Sasuke's feet. If you play the current demo and just, or any classroom in the game and pick Kit Naruto and Kit Sasuke, Kit Naruto's feet are like twice as big as Sasuke's for no reason. Fixing things like that. Um, also uh, made the, uh, this goggle Naruto, I know it's not something you can really tell at runtime, but the goggles are much more um, blended into the model. It's much better done. It's actual part of the model now, not just lazily inserted like it was before. Um, I also removed his holsters because he didn't wear those when he was uh, still in the academy. Um, stuff like that. I've been adding the shirts a little bit um, better, better redid in this version too. So just everything is a much more quality improved uh, model. And I also added in Ninetale Naruto and look at his hair. He actually gets spiky hair. Remember when he goes to QB, his hair is supposed to get super spiky. Um, I gave him spiky hair, actual spiky hair. Um, just things that I'm learning to do in Blender to teach myself um, how to model. And there's a few positives for that. Um, Sasuke for his academy outfit. Oh yeah, they have academy outfits now. So for Sasuke's academy outfit, I went on and I was able to modify his hairstyle um, to uh, have the bangs in front um, like he did in the academy. Only time he ever used that. Um, I also added in just for funsies this outfit. This is his Chidori training outfit. So basically it's the outfit he wears while he's training with Kakashi Chidori. His hair basically grows longer, but he hasn't changed into his black outfit yet. That's really it. And he doesn't wear his um, uh, kunai holder. Um, uh, if you watch the when Gars shows up in his flashback, you'll see he's not wearing that, but he still wears the back pouch. Minor details, but this outfit is in the game. Um, yeah, so you have lots of uh, variations. Of course, his Rogue Ninja outfit as well, and his black outfit, I'll add Boss outfit later. And then Curse Marks in there as well. All of these I've been learning how to add um, for all the custom models. Um, 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 just cuz. Again, look at him. It's CS2 Sasuke in all the outfits. Um, his um, regular outfit, Kinin, his um, uh, academy outfit, except for the headman, always stays. Um, his Chidori training outfit, which is just basically a removal of the pouch, the side thing. His rogue outfit. So yeah, you can just add, I can add in basically whatever I want now. Sakura has all her outfits, including her tuning stuff. I went on and added in a headman just to see if I could do it if I could. Um, I added in earlier today, actually, just before making this video, I went on and redid Shikamaru's models. Um, so all of Shikamaru's models are in Genin, Academy, and Chunin. Um, Eno, obviously you saw I did hers a few days ago, all of her options here. And then earlier today, I also did Academy Choji. Um, so um, that's him without the thing on top. So I had to sculpt his hair. Obviously it's based off of this, but I started to add all the other spikes. That was fun. <laughs> Getting to learn how to do that for um, maybe some of the future characters when I have to add in more uh, more characters. Um, so yeah, these are all fun things to do. I'll add the rest of the characters later. So the point is, um, the modeling is definitely going to help um, get more accurate um, anime accurate outfits, um, such as Naruto, um, and also give more outfits just in general. Um, another thing that is going to do is stages. Um, I haven't started amending the stages just yet. But um, what I'll do is um, I'll show you what the problem is now, just so you can see. Um, we'll put it across the way. So with stages, um, as you may have played in the game now, um, the map is very um, still empty. I haven't really made any updates to it in the last few um, few demos. Um, and then, um, obviously you guys can't play free roam yet, but when I play free roam, like you can't jump over walls and things like that. It's very limited. Obviously the stage is very not done. Um, 
with my new skills learned in Blender, now that I'm learning how to model and I've gotten pretty good at it, that's why I'm practicing so much. Usually I wouldn't waste this much time on visuals, but I'm practicing to get better at it. Um, the problem with Free Realm was um, one, frame rate. You can probably see the frame rates already dropped depending here. It's probably higher because less details, but the moment you start looking at details, the frame rate drops. Um, so it just depends. See there it's smooth, there it's rough. Um, this is basically because when I added all these buildings in the actual game, a lot of these buildings are linked to other buildings. So in order to extract the building, I would have to take all the other parts. I can't, I can't edit at the time. So I shrunk all of them down to polygons underneath the ground. I might can show you. Let me see if I zoom. Ah, there they are. So if you look under the ground, you'll see all these tiny parts just all across the stage. Basically every single building and almost every single asset will have these little tiny um, miniature um, items underneath. Um, these are probably at this point hundreds of thousands, if not millions, probably millions of tries that are otherwise unseen just because I couldn't edit them. I couldn't model back then. This means that every single building has like all these extra assets underneath and some are even doubled. Um, all of this takes up space, even though it's not seen on camera, it's all taking up processing power. Um, and I didn't really have another workaround because again, I can't model. So the only way to get these buildings is to have those extra pieces. So I just shrunk them down and put them under the stage. because that's the only thing I can do with them. With the modeling skills I've learned, I can now go back and delete all of those polys and all those tries. On top of that, a lot of these buildings are actually, they're not rendered on the other side. So what I did was um, a lot of them, I copy and pasted them like this one is actually, it looks like it's done all the way. It's not. That's two of the same building. They're two halves that I've combined into one. But again, a lot of these walls may be double duplicated. Um, uh, so again, a bunch of more unnecessary tries with all the little details from where I just copy and paste the building twice, just so it could have a backside. This is another example. Um, of all these buildings will have kind of weird backsides just because it was the only way I could I could get some kind of opposite end so it doesn't look too terrible. And even here, there's still some fallacies like this. All of this I can now fix with game design, which gives me a couple of advantages. One is going to be improved um, frame rate. Um, so hopefully when I get rid of all those extra tries, this game will be able to run with all of these buildings smoothly because the buildings aren't the problem. It's all these tiny details underneath copied and pasted over a hundred times into the entire leaf village just kills frame rate i'll be able to get rid of all of that all the doubles on the buildings i'll be able to just delete the doubles and just add in the backside. not a problem um this will give me like say better for frame rate more details and the original goal was with these backsides i would just have to have a restricted camera view and you would be pretty limited in where you can explore you can explore most of the village but like this fence is an invisible wall um, up there, you can't actually get up there. Absolutely not. Um, no way to get up there. Um, there are a few exceptions where I do allow some movability. Like here, you can't jump over that wall. But I do allow you to go up here, for example. Um, but again, this is even super low quality. Um, like the back side of the tree is not even done. Um, all these pillars, only some of the pillars are there. Um, um, oh yeah, you can't leave. Um, so this part is kind of... Um, uh, like available, but then there's like nothing up here. Um, I would be able to finish this and allow you to go in, but what I would also be able to do is um, now I will be able to support unrestricted camera movement. I have unrestricted camera movement now because it's a test, but like you can't, you shouldn't be able to turn the camera this way and look behind buildings. But now that the buildings will have other sides, this will enable free camera in free roam. Uh, which is a big deal, it will also enable me to not have to rely on overbearing invisible barriers, such as this fence. Um, I will essentially be able to um, to remove the invisible barrier and you'll be able to jump over the fence um, and actually explore the leaf village. Obviously, though, that will be to an extent, um, you know, you won't be able to like maybe jump into all the buildings, maybe the buildings will have general collision around them to, you know, just be like, okay, there's a building there generic geometry around it to keep you from like, you know, maybe you can't jump in between the windows but um but right here you cannot go back there at all because again it is not ready for any humans to be back there looking at it anybody playing the game but once i'm done with it you will be able to go back there because why not um it will also i'm not again don't hold me to this don't hold me to it i might might be willing to open up the rooftops as well 
um, so then you can actually run throughout a full leaf village inclusive of jumping from roof to roof. Again, don't hold me to it, can't promise it, because if you can jump on one roof, then that means I have to make you jump on all the roofs. And there are some buildings in here that may have extremely complex geometry that maybe I'm just like, you, you should not be able to see on top of this building. Um, if that's the case, then I may need to restrict the rooftops to maybe just small buildings. But at least small buildings, you may be able to even jump on the roofs and run around. If not, then I'll just put basically generic square geometry that goes to keep you from jumping over it. Kind of like these walls here. Um, a building is a building. You can run in between it, but you can't jump on top. We'll see. But I'm going to try, if possible, if it's simple enough, to even enable rooftops. So you can jump and be all up there and throughout wherever you want to be in this massive leaf village. Just again, gotta see. I already kind of have a soft version of this in the game now. You'll see the camera change in a minute and this is to hide in those back details. So this is an example of what I was gonna do where I would have a restricted camera like this. This is to hide those details that I don't want the player to be able to see because of the restricted camera movement. And then here, I let the camera return because this one has pretty decent, again, it's another double. I just took two sides and doubled it. I did a pretty good job of doubling it. Um, but um, hopefully in the final game, this will be, all the paths like this instead of just this one you'll be able to run through all the paths and run through building to building and use the actual overpasses um not just this one that i added but even the ones in the middle of the village uh, it'll all be accessible um in this next version um should i be able to go there um well that's pretty much it the last thing i'll talk about um is um just show you off some uh, some gameplay um i'll just play a few battles um because why not um, just to show you an example of some of the uh, improved move sets, um, I'll just get these two now, but I'll use their academy outfits, because why not, and we'll play at the academy. <coughs> oh yeah, and I fixed the versus screen so now their arms actually touch. It was an animation issue that I forgot about. Get ready! Alright, oh yeah, that's right, I'm playing about battle. Yeah. Alright, um... <clears throat> So the, um, I redid Naruto's moveset as well when I um, redid it. So um, basically the way the custom movesets work now too is if there's a tag for a move, then it will call that move. But if there's not a tag, then it'll just throw in a dummy move. So this means that all characters are viable no matter what stage of development they're in, inclusive of Sakura. As you guys know, Sakura has been broken in all the demos because she only has part of her moveset done. So the part that was done was the only part you could use of hers. Now, that's just the part that's character specific. So if her move, for the moves that I haven't yet programmed in yet for her, they are now um, filled in with dummy moves uh, automatically. It's just part of the, the system now. Um, so, uh, and you'll see that with Naruto too. I have not yet done Naruto's dash B. I'm just lazy that animation is complex. So now he just uses a dummy dash B, which is uh, currently set to the same as Sasuke's. Um, so um, it'll basically be, I added tags in for um, basically if you are using a dummy's um, RB, then it's the same moves as Sasuke's RB, which is a tag. Um, so Naruto's moveset also has been tweaked because it was the first moveset I was done. It didn't have the perfect, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the recovery frames were a little bit not enough. <laughs> so um, he was always dominating in his fights. Um, I've toned it back some. Now that I've redone it, I've done, toned it back to a more realistic um, uh, set. Um, what I'll use next is I'll use uh, I'll use Sakura Academy, and I'll do Academy Eno as well. Uh, it's training grounds. Um, so, what reason I'm showing you Sakura is because she has um, a hybrid moveset basically. Um, so she has some of her unique moves in, like that's unique obviously, um, that's unique, but then like, uh, oh and her obviously 5B is unique, but then if I do um, back B, that's, that, she can now use that kind of stuff. Um, oops. Oh, I'm getting beat up now. Um, but you see that, that that was her dash A. Her dash A is not in the game yet, but I've just put stuff in there now because I can. It just defaults to whatever the dummy option is for that. Um, oops. Oh yeah, that's also unique in there. 
I'm trying to think about which ones I'm pretty jump that is unique. So yeah, anyway, Sakura feels much better now because she can actually use more than just, um, yeah, more than just the moves that I programmed. She has all kinds of moves in there. From the dummy set. And I also expanded the dummy move set. Um, I know I keep all, I'm always expanding the dummy move set. So now that I, all characters have access to all moves, um, that means I can expand the dummy move set to incorporate anything, anything I want, anything that makes sense. I can incorporate. Um, I will use 1010 as well. Um, I actually added in a few moves for 1010. So 1010 has two unique moves added in already, but only two, like not a lot, because uh, she doesn't ready. jump to season two. Um, so ready. the first one she has is her Get jump in. A, um, and she can do five. Sakura can only do three, she does five. <laughs> I think it was actually only four in the original games, but I just, I did five, just because. So yeah, she's just up there forever. <laughs> it's kind of overpowered. Huh. Um, and she also has a bicycle kick. And it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, so she uses Sasuke's bicycle kick as well. Now, her version is slightly different in the actual game. Um, uh, like in Revolution 2 and GNT4, her bicycle kick is slightly different from Sasuke's. But um, I'm not ready to actually start programming in her actual moves. So I just put Sasuke's as a filler for now and tweak some of the variables to make it closer to how hers works. Um, um, so, um, it's not gonna stay this way, but this at least gives you some reasons to play as, uh, Tintin. I also, oh yeah, I also gave her Sakura's, um, JB. Um, she doesn't use this in the actual game, but again, um, it's similar to the one that she will get, so I figured, why not just, you know, add her tag and let her use it, you know, to make her worth playing as, even though she doesn't show up officially until season two. This will at least give you something to do besides playing as just Naruto and Sasuke. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna let this video end. Um, that's kind of where the game is. Um, I'm not releasing a demo just yet. We still have a few things to go. Um, let me see, what do we have left? Um, before my next demo, I'm still working on the character prefab because um, I need to, I've actually only converted the Gemi. Um, in order to get all characters doing all moves, that means all moves need to have their animations for different sizes. So um, yeah, it, it's complicated, but let's just know all the Gemi are done. That's for kids and people kid sized, I need to do tuning. I need to do the joning conversions for the adults. And I, there's a giant variant as well for like Bondo, Rykok, and really big people. They all need their own separate versions of these animations that are scaled proportionally to their size. So I have to go through and scale all the uh, missing um, animations before I can do those ones. But all the kids are done and all getting have been um, converted. Um, and then I need to go back and convert, like I said, I need to um, add in the animations for the tuning, and then I can go do all the tuning people. Then I'll add in the conversions for the jonings, which are the adults. Then I'll go through and change all the jonings through, and then I'll do the giant people. I may do this on the season basis, because that's a lot of characters. There's over there's over 100 characters in the game already. Um, so um, anyway, um, and I have to do it for every character and every outfit. So I may just update them as we go, keep them on the old system, because the old system still works. Um, it's just, it's the limited old version, and then the new versions, yeah, they're much better. Um, but I stopped character prefabs, so then I'm going to do um, the new icons. As you can see up here, um, these icons are... I only have the eyes originally, because I didn't plan on doing HUD for all the other games. Now I'm doing HUD for all the other seasons. Some of the seasons use portraits for their whole face. So I'm going to redo all the portraits um, to actually include face versions, um, and then just crop them to the eyes for the ones that only use eyes um, for the HUD. Um, so I need to redo that for all the characters so that it works better than just cropping out from the face. Like Revolution 2 and Revolution 3's HUD doesn't even have icons because there's no way to get them. I need to add all those in. Um, I'm going to add substitution objects. I'm going to add in ninja tools like tracking shuriken, giant shuriken, sin bone. And then I'm going to add in the air throws, cancel throws, and then taunts. I'm going to do the kumite items and then the menu transitions just to make the game a little bit prettier as it transitions. That's everything I have planned, and then um, I'll do teaser 10 to showcase those things and anything else I add, plus another public demo. And that's the last teaser, trailer, and public demo. After that, it's all movesets, updating the stages, as I mentioned earlier, and then adding in story mode, and then we have season one's release. Um, so, 
see you uh, um, uh, in terms of demo wise. I'll see you in a few um, few more months. Um, but stay tuned for uh, much more gameplay videos coming up. Now that I've got the new characters done, I'll be posting much more gameplay. And um, for everyone that's been supporting, thank you. And um, we'll catch you later. See you soon. Cheers.